All right, so welcome everyone. This is the day 19 of SOC, 30 day SOC challenge. And in here we are going to learn and we are going to get into HTTP log analysis on Splunkson, okay? If you haven't joined the challenge yet, you can find the link in the description below. And make sure once you register yourself, you have to check your confirmation email and it will take you to this Discord server. I've seen hundreds of folks have have been completing the challenge every day. So it's getting very excited every other day. Make sure you you subscribe the channel so that you get notified for new videos. And of course, to get notified, you have to press the bell icon. All right, so let's get started with the day 19, which is Splunk basics for HTTP log analysis. In this, we are going to analyze a HTT an HTTP log file from Zeek IDS. And then I, I, I created that log file myself by simulating different scenarios in HTTP traffic. So you don't have to worry about it. It's all ready made. And um, uh, there are four or five tasks available in here as well. I'll cover probably three or four. I'll leave one for you to practice, okay? Let's come to this plank and under this click on setting tab, click on add data. And that's a prerequisite. Make sure your Splunk is ready. If you haven't set, set it up yet, you can follow my 16th day video, okay? Click on upload here, okay? Click on select file, or maybe you can drag and drop in here itself, okay? Um, you can drag and drop the file here. Uh, I have a file in here. I can just drag and drop and click on next. Then it is it is in the JSON format. JSON is good for Splunk because you don't have to manually parse the data, okay? Then you can go to next. You can mention the host and then it will take you to review option where you have a source type. Source type uh, is basically specify the type of log that you have. Maybe it's a Linux authentication file, syslog file, sys sysmon logs, everything, okay? index name is just like database name so once you submit it will take you to the search and reporting tab in here with the pre-built query to see your logs so i can go to search and reporting in here because i have already uploaded that and i can use my his history logs add this to the search and this is the log this is the query it will take you to where you have a source you have a host name and source type perfect now let's start with our task. First task is to find the top 10 endpoints generating the web traffic. For those who are um, not much aware about HTTP traffic, let me give you a basic idea. In HTTP, this is my client and this is my server, okay? HTTP machine, I mean, basically your browser sends the HTTP request, request and this can be in multiple formats. This can be in get. Whenever, let's say you want to see the content of Google page, google.com, you send a get request. This actually download the content of that URL on your browser, okay? And next we have a post method as well. Post is like downloading, I mean, sorry, uploading the data, okay? It's not exactly uploading. This is like submitting your information. Let's say you, you want to sign in to your uh, Gmail, right? So you enter your username and password. Now you submit that data to the server. That's called post method. You also have put method as well, which is similar to post. Then we have delete method, uh, which is no longer used so much. But yeah, I mean, there are a few more options, which I'll show you in this plug. Then if uh, once you request to certain data, you you get a response from the server. Now, depending on different scenarios, Maybe it's a, you know, it, it was successful, unsuccessful server issue and then with, you know, all possible reason, there can be different response for starting with 200 to 300, 400 and under every response code, there are different category like 201, 202, 203, uh, 401, 402, 403. You don't have to remember all, but remember one thing, I mean, very common one, 200 means it was successful 200 okay that means okay 200 okay right in 400 we have very popular called 404 which means you are accessing trying to access certain 
data on a certain URL you see on the top, this is URL, right? What do you see github.com something, you know, directory, file name, query and all those stuff. This is basically URL or URI. And if you're trying to access the content that no longer exists on the server, you will get 404 not found. Okay. Similarly, we, you also have 402, 403 and other options as well. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, even I can show you practically how exactly it looks like. You can just click right click on your Chrome browser, click on inspect, go to the network tab and refresh your page. Okay. Uh, go to the network tab and click on any, any resource like this, right? So under this, you will see the actual HTTP header. You see your general header. Then you have request. You see this here, Requ uh, sorry, response. And then you see the request, okay? So this is actual header. You have your request URL and the request method, which is get method to download the content on your browser. Then you have status code, which is 200 okay. That means it's all good, right? So I hope this was good for you. Now let's come back to our task. First, we want to retrieve once, of course, uh, once you have, uh, you know, uh, impo imported all the logs on your machine, you ingested all the logs, you can uh, let me show you some of the interesting field. In the interesting field, you have ID originator host, which is basically endpoint machine. So these are all the endpoints, the computer, the user's machine. These are all server because these are all responder, right? Responder host name. Then what else we have method. So method, just the way I said, post, get, connect, option, delete, and all those stuff. Another thing is the response body length, which is the size of the response messages coming in from the server. Then we have status code, which can be 200, 404, 400, 503. 500 range is about server issues. Maybe server is unresponsive or something. 404 is not found, 200 means all good. It's perfect, right? And then we, what else? The TS is timestamp, okay? URI is basically your URI path, okay? And finally, um, user agent. So depending on different user agent, you will see them here with the Mozilla, um, you know, these are some custom, this is, this is suspicious, right? Because nobody use the user agent like Python script or something. So, I use Windows, right? So your user agent is like your Chrome browser, your Firefox, your Mozilla, you know, um, and uh, basically no, no, a genuine user will not use the Python script, in fact, right? So let's begin with the task. You have first task, which is to find top 10 endpoints generating the web, tra web traffic. So basically you need the top talkers so we'll use the statistics command, the stats command. I'll copy it from here and come here, apply pipe. And then with the stats command, I want to count the source endpoint, originator IP address, post IP address. You see this ID dot originator underscore H that represent the originator host, okay? And then we are going to stats by uh, ascending, descending, I guess, descending order and top 10 IP address, right? So that's hit 10. Hit enter, this will give you the top 10 IP address and their count, perfect. Now let's go to this task number two, which is the count the number of server errors observed, okay? So server errors are based, when we say the server error, this means we are looking for the server response code of 500 series, okay? So you can also see that on HTTP web server response code. Um, yes, so if you see this is 500 represent the server error. You see this? Perfect. Now uh, what I can do is I want to see all the server response code. You see this server code of more than uh, equal to or more than 500 and less than 600 so 600 doesn't exist although but yeah i mean we are using it just to get the query and then we are going to find the uh, get the count based on the statistics okay um in this case what i've done is i create i rename the count you see the stats count as server error this is not a keyword i just 
rename the count as server error so that it looks good for us right so perfect can you see this server error 285 perfect now let's go to the next task which is to identify user agents associates associated with the possible scripted attack so what happened is most of the time when the when you launch an attack when sorry when a, a malicious actor launch an attack or penetration tester uh, launch some script they don't use the browser itself okay they might be using python script bash script in those situations your user agent which is supposed to be your browser can be chrome can be mozilla firefox can be opera anything right but it shouldn't be curl it shouldn't be SQL map, it shouldn't be a Python request, right? So that's what we are going to find it. And uh, we are going to look at user agent. You see this? Let me show you, remove this. You have user agent here and you see Mozilla, but you also see the Python script. So now we want to look at all the malicious script, okay? And for this, we are going to use the user agent query and we will apply a clause in is a clause like the SQL query and then that's where we are going to enter everything that we want to filter out we will uh, we will remove what is really genuine like mozilla chrome from the query and then we are going to count by user agent let's hit enter perfect so these are all the queries uh, which are suspicious and that's the, this is their count okay Next, find out the large file transfer greater than 500 KB. For this, we already have an interesting field, which is um, response data, I guess. Yeah, response body length. Okay. So this is what we are going to use. Uh, we will apply the query in here, and then we will see the data in the table format. Table means, um, of course, you know the table with different columns into it, with timestamp, with ID host, uh, with the responders, the server IP address, with URI, with the responder, uh, with the response body length. Okay. Then we are going to sort it by response body length. Okay. So let's use this, apply this onto the search query. Perfect. Awesome. Can you see that this is the timestamp? This is the host IP, the computer IP address. This is the server IP address. You may be wondering how can a server IP address is um is is of this range this is possible i just simulated myself the entire scenario with the multiple ip address so this assuming this is the internal server that's that's the reason you see this ip address right and this is the response body length and their file file size all right so i hope you really enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions